So I'm talking about one of my pet subjects at the moment, computer vision. Uh, his title is, his uh, session is called How AI is Transforming Creative Decision Making and Results. Stefan, over to you, mate. Thank you. Uh, right, hi everyone, thanks for being here. What's really weird about this is I have no idea, can you hear me? Maybe I should get some headphones. I thought being in person would be nice to get some human feedback, but this is actually almost worse. So, um, yeah, so I'm Stefan Britton, I'm the Commercial Director at DataSign. I've got 10 minutes, so let me start my timer. Um, and we specialize really in helping companies get much better results from their paid social. And we do that by running a process called uh, creative analysis. So we use computer vision and natural language processing to help you understand what creative works for your audiences. Now, why do we do this? Well, our industry has got an absolutely massive problem. 96% of ads are not even remembered and not even noticed. So we are spending billions of pounds on ads that simply just don't work and just don't get seen. And 2020 has obviously made that a much tougher job. So the average CPM on Facebook doubled in 2020 as the world rushed to sell online, going from $8 to $16 for every thousand impressions. Um, so not only is it more expensive, it's also way more competitive. There are now 9 million active advertisers on Facebook, whereas a year and a half ago, there were only 6 million. So that's a 50% uplift in competition for you while you're on there. So not only is it more expensive, it's more competitive, and it's growing every single day. And on the other side of this digital explosion is the consumer. Now, I had to double check this stat, but it's absolutely true. The average consumer in the UK sees up to 10,000 ads. In America, they see up to 17,000 ads a day. So that's a crazy amount. Now, obviously not just on Facebook, across multiple platforms. But what this really means is, you have got a consumer base that's seeing more ads than at any time in human history. And given that all the receptors in our brain are visual, 70% of the receptors in our brain are visual, our brain processes visual input 60,000 times faster than it does text. So if you're staring at these ads now that are firing at you, that's the reason why. So not only are consumers seeing more ads, but they're making decisions about them really, really quickly. Because our brain is hardwired to look at imagery, our brains can make decisions on whether we like an ad in milliseconds. So as you can see, uh, Google say it takes 50 milliseconds for someone to decide if they like an ad. Facebook say it's 1.7 seconds. So when you distill down these numbers, what it actually means is you've got 50 milliseconds to get 1.7 seconds attention from someone who's seen up to 10,000 ads from 9 million different companies. And that's just on Facebook. And the algorithms aren't going to do it for you anymore. Now, I'm personally very pleased to see the end of third-party data. Uh, I think it's going to give us a herald of return back to more creative, intelligent marketing. Instead of just having algorithms chasing people around the internet, we're actually going to think about how we present our products. So, what does this mean for you guys? Well, what it really means is that, obviously, creative is king. Now, we used to say content is king, but 80% of a click comes from the creative you use on your ad. 90% of the click comes from the creative, according to Ipsos. So it's nuts when you think you've got so much competition for iShare, you've got milliseconds to get people's attention, and the single most important attribute of an ad is often left to guesswork. You're creative. How do you know what creative to use? All this pressure on creative, it's crazy that we use guesswork. So how do you know what the right creative is consistently and at scale across multiple audiences, across multiple stages of the funnel. Well, your guess is as good as mine. And that's exactly the problem. This is too important to guess and too complex for humans to do. Now, it's a fairly small audience today. I think the beer, the sun, the fact that it's after lunch. But I guarantee you in a year's time, this will become the norm. Because it's nuts that we are choosing the creative for our ads in advance. And then all we do is A-B test them. And the fundamental problem with A-B testing is, and this is a really significant one when you actually think about it, you only know what doesn't work after it hasn't worked. So after you have spent money to put an ad live, you've let the Facebook algorithms dynamically optimize them, you've actually burnt your money because you spent it twice. Once on paying for ads that don't work, and secondly on lost opportunities from having ads out there that you don't know are not very good until people don't click on them and engage with them. 
So clearly, the industry needs help making decisions around the creative process. Now, before I started data design, I started a company called Phrasey. We did artificial intelligence subject lines for emails. Everyone thought we were crazy. Everyone said it's nuts. No one's ever going to make business out of that. Now, a multi-billion pound business, and everyone in the email world uses AI for their subject lines. It's very normal. This will be the next step for the creative world. Using AI to select the creative for each and every audience is clearly and significantly overly performing human control tests. So how does this work? Well, computer vision is a form of artificial intelligence, and computer vision will turn every pixel in an image into code. And it'll break that code down into multiple layers. So the first thing it will do is look at everything the human can see in the ad. So in this case, we've got a woman on the phone in front of some trees with some long hair, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the first layer of analysis. And computer vision will automatically tag everything that's in this image. That doesn't sound particularly surprising. It's not particularly complex. But where it starts to get complex is it looks at it over a number of different layers. Um, there are lots of companies out there that do this. Our company, we look at 72 different layers of information. And I'm summarizing here just to help it make more sense. First layer, what the human can see. The second layer that we look at is the design elements and the obvious design elements, things like color, style, temperature, contrast, all of the things that you as humans can see. But then we actually start to dig in and analyze a little deeper. We start to look at things like depth of field. We start to look at the semantic properties. As you can see, our algorithms have spotted this has got what it considers to be a romantic background theme. I think partly because it's it's in Italy or Paris, it's got that kind of sepia treatment to it. But all of this is done by computer vision. So the computer vision is able to look at all of these different elements. It can see what the humans can see, it can see the design elements, it can see complex things, as even as complex as depth of field. So the 3D element that's in that image. And what it does, because it's using artificial intelligence, it's actually going to be able to combine all of these things and look at how they work in combination. Now, I've only got 10 minutes, so I didn't want to go too much detail about the numbers of this. But if you do an A versus B test, you're testing two things, A versus B. If you bring in a third thing, that vectors that number up to 12, because you've got four different experiments looking at three different points. You've got A versus B, C versus B, B versus A, et cetera, et cetera. What we're looking at here are literally millions and millions of points of data that are being compared with other millions and millions of points of data. So you could have a data science team of 100 people, they couldn't do this because artificial intelligence is able to look at how every single element in that ad works in combination with other elements in the ad. And when this is combined with contextual data and semantic data, and by contextual data I mean things like your audience targeting settings, your placement settings, whether it's an Instagram post, whether it's a carousel lab, whether it's a single image ad, all of these contextual elements all build into this data set. And of course, to really anchor it and make it make more sense, we're also looking at the results that your ads got. So what would happen is our app, we're Facebook partners, we plug into the, data, the Facebook ad manager, we look at all of your historic data, we run this creative analysis process across all of your imagery. And I should say, incidentally, I've talked a lot about uh, creative as imagery. We also read copy. So we can read and analyze the copy, and we can then tell you what works, what your audience is like, and what they don't like. And we can then, in turn, allow you to test your ads before you put them on Facebook. And we can tell you whether they will work or not before you launch them, which is when you need to know. So by looking at this massive data set, the AI can actually spot visions and patterns in that data that we as humans can't. We as humans, we see things, we're trained as kids to spot the difference between a cat and a dog, and we can spot that at six months old. Computer vision has taken 40 years of training to spot the difference between a cat and a dog. But what it does, because it's not looking and viewing things the way we as humans do, it's turning everything into a mathematical representation. So what you've actually got is a mathematical representation that's feeding off of billions of points of data for every image that you've used, comparing that across your semantic and contextual properties, and looking at the results you've got, which then in turn means that you can see what works from a data-led point of view and what doesn't, and the AI can then select the right images for you for every single ad. So, because it's deep learning, it's artificial intelligence, it's got a feedback mechanism in it that will learn from every single ad campaign that you do. So once the algorithms have trained themselves on your data, they'll be able to tell you what works and what doesn't for every single one of your custom audiences. 
and you can feed that into other places, your website design, your out of home ads, your digital ads. We can also help you make decisions for the creative, so we can tell you in advance whether to use image A, or image B, image C, whichever image. We can even do that programmatically by connecting to your digital asset management folder. You select the audience, you select the goal, we'll automatically pick you the right creative. Even if you wanted stock imagery, we connect into Shutterstock and we can find the right creative for you from there. Artificial intelligence can also give you advice when an ad is already live. So by connecting your asset library to a product like DataSign, we can actually tell you if an ad that you've got live today could perform better by making some changes either to the creative or to the copy. And because we've got that deep neural network of data, we can tell you what those changes should be. And of course, at the end of a campaign, you should get a full breakdown of everything that's worked and hasn't worked, so you know for your next campaign to do more of this, less of this, and you get this virtuous circle of much better feedback. Now, I've only got a minute or two left, now, I'm legally obliged by law, obviously, to tell you the fantastic results we get. So, yes, we get fantastic results. On average, our customers see a 30% improvement in click-through rates, and we reduce cost per click by as much as 50% because we're able to do the testing in advance. So rather than you putting 10 ads on Facebook and letting the Facebook algorithm dynamically optimize them, burning budget and taking two weeks to learn, run the test in advance, we still use the Facebook algorithms, but we can tell you the result your Facebook ad will get before you put it on Facebook. It's a game changer, and I guarantee in two years' time, you'll all be doing it. Right, I have got time for one or two very quick, non-awkward, non-technical questions, if anybody has any. Right, what Stefan's no. not worked out is I'm the only person that knows what the questions are. Oh, because okay, I've got you've got some, out. okay. Yeah. Um, so the first one we had three was, if, compute, if uh, computer vision is optimizing the images that campaigns are going to use. Are we not moving to a situation where imagery in creative is going to start to look very similar for competing brands? That does come up a lot. And actually, yeah, you will end up with this, but it's not some zero thing. There's so many millions of points of data that when we actually built this product, we were building it for the travel sector, which was fantastic timing to launch that at the beginning of 2020. But if you imagine, if you're Hilton Hotels, you might have 500 photographs of a hotel. In fact, you might have 30 photographs of the swimming pool. So what we're going to do is tell you which swimming pool photograph will work best. So we're not coming up with new creative concepts. We're not saying your next campaign needs to be a black and white jazz themed art deco style. Because if we did that, then we would end up coming down to one thing. What we're doing is helping you make better creative choices out of the creative you already have. That's brilliant. Guys, um, we're on a very tight deadline today. So I'm going to let Stefan go because I know there's a thing on tonight we all need to get home for. So and he, he's got tickets, by the way, everybody. That guy there has got tickets for the football, and he's going right after this. Is he coming home? And he paid £75 for his ticket. All right, so if you'd like to mug that yeah. guy on the way out, I think that would be fun for all of us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Stefan Breton. Right, thanks, guys.